Hi there, I'm Ishan Mani reporting for Kids First, and today I am super excited to speak with Jennifer Lane, a veteran of the C-suite. Featured in Variety's LA Women's Impact Report 2020, Jennifer Lane is best known as Queer Eyes Mama Bear, showrunner, and EP. She's also directed Raising an Olympian, Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, and she's EP'd Sweet Home Oklahoma. Thank you so much, Miss Lane, for taking the time to speak with me today. As a fellow Texan, I love seeing that your degrees are from UT and, of course, a master's from AFI. It's true. I'm a Texan through and through. I'm just Ooh. curious. You really did your homework, Ishan, because how did you know I was nicknamed Mama Bear? <laughs> That's an industry secret. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Thank you. I saw it in the uh, Variety Report. That was uh, your your reference. I saw that. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Uh, so, should we get into it? Let's do it. All right. So, you've worn ma many hats over the course of your career as executive producer, director, consulting producer, producer, director of photography, and a camera person. So, which of these is the most challenging? You may know this already, but it's definitely being the EP showrunner, without a doubt. Like I long for those days when you were really a part of a crew and you could go hang out and have dinner afterwards. That's not the world of the EP. The EP is, is hustling right back home to get on the computer for another five hours. So I think, um, without a doubt, e being an EP is the most challenging, but not just because of the workload, but also because it's our responsibility to make sure that the crew is is safe and that everyone's having a positive work experience and and also that you're 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 producing the the show creatively and that it's on budget so because of those stressors it's definitely absolutely it's definitely the di most difficult and do you enjoy any of these roles more than the others do you mean like between being a camera? All being of them, a yeah. Between camera person, producer, director, all of them. I'm sure that's changed over my lifetime, but I, I would say directing. Directing is fun because um, you don't have as many emails as you do when you're a producer, but you're still just right in there in the creative process, creating something for everyone else to see. That's magic. Absolutely, yeah. And you have put out several magical projects. Oh, thank you. So when did you know that you wanted to work in entertainment? I distinctly recall being at the zoo when I was probably in second grade and my dad made me hold his big camera and I picked it up and I asked if I could take a picture and I snapped this like perfect picture of this hippopotamus. And of course then the film had to come back from the lab. So it was like two weeks later, the pictures came in and my parents were like, oh my gosh, this picture is the most beautiful picture we've ever seen. You're a photographer. And so my interest in entertainment started with photography. And I really was into that in high school and like yearbook photography. And so my interest started in the visual arts. Yeah. That's wonderful. In terms of your pathway to the C-suite, what influenced you most? Was it your education or your working relationships? My education. I, I, you know, I think I hesitated only because it seems almost cooler to be like working in the business instead. But the truth is, is that, you know, I got out of college at, at the University of Texas and I went into working at the public television station and I was there for seven years and kind of feeling like I was hitting a little bit of a glass ceiling. Like, where else do you go? And I, and I knew the way that I could leave was to be going for my master's degree, you know, instead of like just driving to LA on a dream. I, I kind of used my master's degree as a buffer. So at least while I was trying to figure myself out, I was doing something practical with my time. So Absolutely. yeah, so I went to AFI and kind of late for, you know, I was one of the older folks in my class at, at 29. Well, you made it. Obviously that was a good yeah, choice. So don't ever let somebody tell you you can't change your life at, at 30. That's <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you've spent a lot of time as a director, as you've mentioned, uh, bringing you unique and creative perspectives, you know, to all the shows that you work on. So what do you believe is the most unique part about your own artistic perspective? 
I think I'm unique in my field as a showrunner because I was a camera woman. I was a DP and I was a director and I edit and I love writing and I love thinking about ideas. So I kind of like, I think as a showrunner, my uniqueness comes from my um, experiences in all realms that you have to look over. And so I think very key to me too, is that I, I, was, I started at PBS. So I was really educated in the, the art of verite documentary filmmaking, which was very much supposedly removed from the subject you're, you're meant to observe rather than infiltrate, which is very much reality TV sparkle. And so I think I'm unique because I bring some of those documentary chops to my reality producing. I like to let things breathe. I don't want to tell everybody too much. Keep it, keep, play your cards to your chest and, and let magic happen by letting it breathe. It's almost like kinetic energy. You know, when you try to hold something too tight, it's just going to die versus having this really allowing as much space as I can, no matter what I'm doing so that others can play and not feel that tension. I think it creates really great TV. That's amazing. And I love that description as well. Like kinetic energy. I love that. <laughs> yeah, let it flow. Otherwise, what are you, you're just squishing everybody. I, I want to hear everybody's good ideas. I think great directing is directing good ideas. Deciding Absolutely. which ones to implement and which ones not to. That's your job. But certainly yes. not to think you're the only one that has them. That's, that's, that's for starters. That's definitely a very valuable part of just filmmaking in general. So what's the most gratifying part of your work? And how do you describe the feeling when you see your creative vision finally playing out in front of you? The most gratifying part of the job is to know that, it, that our show has mattered to somebody. And that includes any show. We put so many hours and effort into every last frame. And I think just knowing that people have been moved People have been brought together because of something I've, I've spent a lot of time and energy on really, really is the most gratifying part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And you've accomplished many incredible things and are still accomplishing more every day. So what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered for? Well, I, I, I want to be remembered for making a difference um, when it comes to LGBTQ issues on um, television, right? So many activists do so much more in their lines of work, but in television, I want to be known as a producer that, you know, I was going to say change the world and I was just like, oh my God, no. But the <laughs> truth is, is like, what more could you ask for than to actually have made a difference in the way people see LGBTQ people. That matters. That's cool. Yes, totally. And, um, you know, Queer Eye is a groundbreaking uh, show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So what led you to direct and then EP the show? I, I, I EP'd, uh, I was hired to be the showrunner of the reboot. And then I directed the first two seasons because of my directing background. It made a lot of sense that we do it that way. The first couple seasons. So I was um, hired first as the EP and then became the director of seasons one and two. And what really drew you to this project? I bet you could guess, but it definitely is the LGBTQ. Hitting putting queer back on the map matters to me. Um, it's, it's funny just how much our culture has changed in the 15 years since the show was first on TV. So what an honor to be able to be a part of this reboot. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for speaking with me today, Ms. Lane. It's been a pleasure. I'm Ishan Mani reporting for Kids First. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications by hitting the bell so you don't miss my next interview or those of my awesome Kids First teammates. Also, follow Kids First on all social media at the usernames on the screen. Bye. Bye.